people don't understand, and, and more people should understand this. We live in Florida, and the way our elevation works is, in general, rain falls all over the state, but central Florida is higher than the coast. Okay, now this is there's only variations of tens of feet, right? Sometimes a couple hundred feet. When rain fills that Hillsborough River as it flows out into the bay, it fills up ponds, lakes, streams all along the way. When Florida was developed, a lot of those waterways were totally disrupted. And the way the government at the time, and I think it's relatively the same now, dealt with that development was they said, oh, you're going to remove this wetland. Okay, well, now you have to build a big pond that would capture the water that would otherwise go in the wetland in one place. Well, if the Hillsborough River is super high and all the lakes and the feeder ponds and the streams that go to the bay are super high too, and the bay itself has a surge, where do you think that retention water is going to go? It's going to overspill into that neighborhood. So if you zoom out, David, on the city of Tampa, now this is a FEMA flood map. So this really only shows the coastal areas of surge. Zoom into Parkland Estates. Do you, do you know where that is, David? Okay, so bottom left, it's Caddy Corner on the left section of where it's highlighted. So like the Hyde Park area, kind of like where we're at right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Scroll down a little bit. So right, pause right here. Where all these trees are on the map, Parkland Estates, for those listening, it's kind of near the Palmacia Golf Course, right? That area is actually a basin, okay? But on the map, and I don't know why it's not updating, but on the map, it's an ex-flood zone. So a buyer would look at that and go, ex-flood zone, I'm good. But they don't understand that the topography of that area is actually lower than the surrounding. We're only, again, we're only talking a few feet, but a few feet make a massive difference. That area had water in it that sat there for hours and hours and hours and days because it wasn't able to be pumped out. There's There's a discrepancy between information here. People can no longer look at the FEMA map to determine their flood risk. You have to look at the topography. Now, what I believe is going to happen, and I've talked to a couple people at the city, they're going to be putting out some sort of a map that actually combines both of those things together, where you have the city of Tampa map, the topography, these different basins with these storm pumps, and the FEMA map, which shows the coastal area. So you can see the Hillsborough River, you can see the flood risk, but you don't see any risk in the interior section. And those, mm-hmm. some of those interior sections flooded, not only Parkland Estates, but up north too. And um, around the Bay Zaharis Golf Course, right? Forest Hills flooded. That's an ex-flood zone. You saw areas in Sarasota, same thing, out in Riverview, Gibsonton, right? All the way out east in Hillsborough County flooded. We haven't, and I say we, right, there hasn't been the correct information showed to the public. Too many realtors have just say, said, X flood zone, you're good to go, and advised their clients that it was a purchase based on no flood risk. That wasn't true, and it's not the realtor's fault. It's really not anyone's fault. When you have a historic event, I think it's hard to find fault. I think you need to learn from it and grow and move forward. How do you plan for something historic if it's historic? You kind of can't, right? I think moving forward, there needs to be some federal initiative to show a more detailed plane of water flow. So so not only coastal high hazard areas, which is essentially what this map is, but it should also show what did what did the map look like a hundred years ago, right? Scroll down, David, to Bayshore Beautiful. Do you know know where that is? Down the peninsula. So Gandhi Boulevard. You see Gandhi? Scroll in right there, Bayshore Boulevard. So where it says A-E on the right, David, up here on the right, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't know that used to be a lake. Now you can see it here on the FEMA map, how it peels out uh, into the peninsula. But that area, when you stand in that area, you are lower than all sides. Meaning if you have a storm surge event, even though if your house is built up a little bit, you're going to get water. You're living in a lake. That information isn't material fact. It's not required by the realtor, the seller. Now, if you've had flooding before, you have to disclose that. But there's no information out there about the history of wetlands, waterways, streams, where the old rivers were. I think that needs to be expressed. Is that something you guys have seen? Because this is a massive piece of news 
that I don't think anyone was thinking about before. Mm. Before water yeah. and non X flood zones. So a few years ago, they created uh, the Flood Hub, which is based out of USF. And the idea was we would get all of Florida's best and brightest scientists and and um, geographers and and all of those and create our own set of maps. So we're not relying on on federal maps, and we'll have much more granular mm. data points, right? And that was the idea. And my understanding is that that work was completed back in the spring, um, but those maps have yet to be publicly released. Hey guys, if you want to watch the full episode of this clip, click right here. Make sure to subscribe by clicking right here. Thank you for watching.